Once you have installed Beam Backup and Replication, it is now time to get started understanding and navigating the console. Throughout this demonstration, we will provide a quick overview of where to add in the proper backup infrastructure components, how to configure backup jobs, and most importantly, how to restore your data to keep your business always running. Let's get started. This is the Veeam Backup and Replication console. As you can see, I have it already set up with backup jobs running to protect my data. If you're in a fresh installation, the first step you want to do is to add in your environment you want to protect. By clicking on the Inventory tab, you can add in your virtual environment, physical infrastructure, and file shares here. Since I've already added in my virtual environment, I'm just going to run through the wizard and show you how easy it is to get started. If I right click on my VMware environment and go to properties, you can see that all I needed to do was add in my DNS name or IP address with the proper credentials to get my environment added. If you're trying to protect your physical infrastructure, you're going to need to create a protection group that's going to include the computers and the physical servers that you want to protect. To do this, all you need to do is click Create Protection Group, add in the way that you want to populate the protection group with your computers, choose the computers you're trying to protect. If you need to exclude any objects that is available to you in the wizard as well, Next, you can choose your discovery options. This will allow you to rescan the protection group every day at a specified period of time. You can also install the backup agent and have it auto update when needed. If you're trying to protect your file share or NAS workloads, you can add that in here as well. Now that we've added in the environment that we want to protect, the next thing we need to do is add in our at backup repository. You can see here I have some backup repositories already added in. There are different backup repository types that you can add into your environment. If I click on one of these types, it's going to ask me for the operating system that I want to add in. So if I click on deduplicating storage appliance, you can see that there's different deduplicating storage appliances that we can add in here to use as a backup repository. Last but not least, if you're trying to backup to object storage, you can choose which type of object storage you want to use as your backup repository. Since I've already added in some object storage into my environment, let's quickly go over to the wizard and how easy it is to get started. If I right click on my Microsoft Azure Blob Storage, you can see that I have added in a name, I have chosen my account that I want to use to store these backups in, I have then specified the container and folder. Next, you can limit the object storage consumption for this container. This is basically going to help you save on costs. If you're using immutability, you can also make recent backups immutable here for a specified period of time. This is just going to make sure that those backups remain unchanged and undeleted from any malicious outsider. Awesome. That's just how easy it is to get started adding in your backup repositories. In Veeam Backup and Replication, we also have the Scale-Out Backup Repository. To do this and to add it in, all you have to do is go to Scale-Out Backup Repositories, right-click, and add Scale-Out Backup Repository. Since I already have one added in here, I'm going to walk you through the wizard to show you how easy it is to get started. First, we create a name for our backup repository. Next, we choose our performance tier. This is going to be the landing zone for short-term retention. Next, we're going to choose our placement policy. There are two policies available here. One is data locality, which all backup files are placed on the same extent. The next is performance, that all backup files are placed on different extents. Next, we're going to choose our capacity tier where we want to extend our scale backup repository to. In this situation, I have it going to my Azure Immutable Backup Repository. 
I can then choose to copy backups to object storage as soon as they're created for that extra redundancy. I can also move backups to object storage as they age out of the operational window and choose which period of time I want them to be moved there. We don't want to forget to encrypt the uploaded data to object storage. Next, if you need long-term retention or you have frequent, infrequently accessed data that you need to store, you can use the archive tier. I do not have this configured in my environment, but if you want it configured, all you need to do is add in that archive extent. So now we've added in our virtual environment and our backup storage. We want to start creating backup jobs. You can see here at the top, there is a lot of different jobs that we can create. We can create a backup job, we can create a replication job, or a CDP policy. If we click on Best Practices Analyzer, this is going to check our environment to see if we're following the best practices. As you can see, unfortunately here, I have some work to do. There are different backup jobs types that we can create. If I want to create a backup, I can simply right click on jobs. I can right click in the pane or I can go to the top and click on the backup job wizard. I can also come here to the inventory pane and see all the backups I have stored on disks. It's important to note that as you create different types of jobs, this is going to filter in here as well what jobs they are. So if you're creating backup jobs, replica jobs, sure backup jobs, that's all gonna filter in here. But since I don't have those jobs set up, you're basically just being able to see which jobs I have set up. Let's create a backup job. So I created a name for my backup job. I have chosen which virtual machines that I want to back up. To do this, I can browse my virtual environment and pick out the virtual machines. I can also sort by vSphere tags. So if I want to tag my virtual machines as I create them, I can create the job based on those tags. And then each time the job runs, it will automatically gather these tags and put them in the backup job. Next, I'm gonna choose my backup proxy. If you have multiple backup proxies in your environment, you can specify which backup proxy you want the job to use. Then we choose our backup repository. In this situation, I'm gonna send it to um, my Skelet backup repository, or I can go directly to object storage as well. Choose my retention policy. If I want to keep certain full backups for longer archival purposes, I can set my GFS retention. I can also configure a secondary destination for the job. There are some advanced settings that you can set here, but for the sake of this example, I'm not gonna run through that today. We also have additional guest processing options available to you. We don't wanna to forget to set our backup job schedule. I have it running automatically at a certain time every day, but you can schedule it to run after a backup job. You can have it scheduled to run periodically every hour whatever is best for your business. Now we have the summary page. This is just gonna help us review what we have just set. If you wanna use a PowerShell commandlet for starting the job, that's available here as well. And then I'm gonna click run the job when I finish out the wizard. So as you can see now, our backup job is starting to run and we're well on our way to protecting our data. Now that we have taken a backup, let's look at how we can restore. If I right click on one of these machines that I've backed up, you can see the variety of restore options I have available to me. If I wanna restore the entire virtual machine, maybe I wanna to restore to Amazon EC2 or Microsoft Azure, I can move the backup or copy the backup to a new repository. In this example, I'm gonna restore an entire virtual machine. First, I wanna select the virtual machine I want to restore. Next, I wanna choose where I wanna restore that machine. I can restore it to the original location, to a new location with different settings, or I can perform a staged restore. 
I also have the ability to do a quick rollback, which is just gonna restore the changed blocks. Next, I can choose if I wanna do a secure restore. The secure restore feature is going to scan the selected backup for malware. This is basically going to use an antivirus scan, scan the backup, and if a virus is found or if malware is found on that backup, I can abort the restore or I can restore to a new location with different settings. Next, we just choose the restore reason. Great, now you know how to restore your data. Thank you for watching our video. I hope this helped you on your way to getting started with Veeam Backup and Replication.